Good morning friends. We will discuss stent assisted coiling in a patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage due to a broad based ACOM aneurysm. The objectives of the talk would include antiplatelet usage in the setting of subarachnoid hemorrhage, technical nuances and continuous intraarterial infusion. This is a CT scan of a 50 year old lady with diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage and mild hydrocephalus. This is a 3D rotational angiography which shows a very broad based dysplastic ACOM aneurysm with a pseudolobule at the top of the fundus. Antiplatelet protocol. The first step is to determine whether the patient will need an external ventricular drain. If the patient needs an EVD, the EVD is inserted first. Two hours later, a CT scan is performed to see if there is any tract hemorrhage. If there is no tract hemorrhage, antiplatelet loading is performed. Antiplatelet loading is timed in such a fashion that the stent deployment will occur two hours from the time of loading. A cosprin 300 mg and prasugrel 50 mg was used in this particular instance. Steps of stent assisted coiling. The first step is to take the stent microcatheter into the right A2 ACA. Following that the aneurysm microcatheter is placed within the aneurysm sac. Few coil loops are deployed. Then a baby Leo stent is taken into the A2 ACA and partly deployed in such a fashion to act as a scaffold across the neck of the sac. Then coil loops are deployed. Note the microcatheter position is not as satisfactory as we wanted it to be. The first coil placement was satisfactory. However, while deploying the second coil, we noted coil loops prolapsing into the ACOM region and this was due to the unsatisfactory microcatheter position. The second coil was removed. A headway microcatheter was used as it better retains the shape. A reverse curve was given. Note the proximal and distal curves very close to each other, giving a better microcatheter tip position within the sac. Further coils were deployed as noted in the blank roadmap and better coil occlusion of the aneurysm sac was obtained. Following coil occlusion of the aneurysm sac, stent deployment was continued in the A1 ACA. However, if deployment was continued in the same fashion, we noted that the stent would project into the terminal ICA, which is not a good configuration to achieve. Therefore, the entire stent was resheathed and redeployed from a distal position in the A2 ACA. This way, we were able to achieve complete stent deployment within the A1 ACA. 12 hours after coiling, which is day 6 post subarachnoid hemorrhage, she left her left leg weakness. Angiography showed diffuse vasospasm and intraarterial dilatation with the above cocktail was performed. 36 hours post coiling, she developed left arm weakness and she became drowsy. And DSA again showed diffuse vasospasm in both anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery territories. Therefore, we decided to perform continuous intraarterial dilatation. We place a microcatheter, usually a O2-1 microcatheter in the cervical internal carotid artery. Once the microcatheter is placed, the Picard is withdrawn into the arch of the iota to avoid embolism. The entire setup is fixed on the thigh and the knee using an ioban. Nimodipin 40 mg, mildenone 20 mg and heparin are infused at the above mentioned rate through the microcatheter. A saline flush is maintained through the Picard. IV heparin at a rate of 10 units per kg per hour is maintained to prevent thrombus formation. The setup is changed every third day until the spasm phase is complete. The patient made excellent recovery. Thank you very much for listening. Dr. Raj Srinivas Pathasarathy from Artemis Agrim Institute of Neuroscience.